Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Abramson. I am a patient that lives with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, hyperadrenergic postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome, and myalgic, encep myalgic encephalomyelitis. Um, more than anything, I'm a patient advocate, but I also work as a professional in the rare disease space. I have my MPH and my certification in health education specialists. Today, we're gonna to talk about navigating relationships and maintaining intimacy when living with a chronic condition. Um, I will caution everyone if there's young ears in the room, this is a PG-13 talk. We're gonna talk about sex and intercourse. Um, some of our objectives today are understanding intimacy and relationships, knowing the impact that intimacy can have on your relationships and just your overall well-being, uh, identifying challenges with intimacy when you live with any sort of chronic condition, uh, learning to practice practical strategies that can help you navigate your relationships and intimate partnerships, and just encouraging everyone and embracing yourself and raising awareness. So let's understand a little bit about intimacy and relationships. Raise your hand if when you think of intimacy, all you think of is sex. No? Okay. Intimacy really is an all-encompassing term that refers to a deep emotional connection and closeness between more than one individual. It involves vulnerability, it involves trust, and a really big sense of understanding. There's multiple types of intimacy. So we have emotional intimacy, which focuses on sharing emotions, thoughts, and personal experiences. It's really about being open and empathetic, sympathetic, and supportive of each other, regardless of what's happening. Um, we have physical intimacy, which is obviously sex, and it encompasses more than just sex. It's any sort of physical touch and sexual forms of closeness. So um, you have very dif different forms of intercourse that you can, you can engage in, and it encompasses all of those. This also includes other forms of physical intimacy like hugging, cuddling, and even shaking hands can be a form of intimacy. You also have intellectual intimacy. Intellectual intimacy involves engaging in really deep conversations, so asking each other those hard questions that maybe will bring you out of your comfort zone and sharing ideas that you don't share with a lot of other people. It really creates this sense of mental closeness that you might not be sharing with anyone else. We also have spiritual intimacy, which revolves around all of the shared beliefs that you may hold. So really thinking about your background and your values and just how you might share those and connect those with your partner. Um, it also involves nurturing each other's spiritual intimacy. So if you have different beliefs, being able to understand and nurture what those are for each other. Um, and then you also have experiential in intimacy, which focuses on all the amazing activities you guys might do together. So for my partner and I, we like to go to concerts and sporting events, and those are our activities that really bring us closer together. Um, it involves traveling. So if you brought someone special with you here, that brings you closer together. Um, and then you also have cultural and, and social intimacy. So really, again, your background and how you were brought up, all of these different things that can just bring you closer to your partner. All of these types of intimacy bring you to a place in your relationship where you are able to connect on a deeper level. But there's also something, a kind of newer term that's been thrown around called love languages. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of these, but there's five love languages out there. So we have words of affirmation, which is just expressing love through different positive, um, really kind, supportive words. We have quality time, um, which is obviously very important given um, you know, undivided attention to your partner um, can really just strengthen your bond. Acts of service is another type of love language where you demonstrate love by doing helpful things. Um, I think this one is probably one of the most important for someone living with a chronic condition because 
An act of service can be something as simple as getting water or sitting with you in the hospital or taking care of your medical appointments. Um, this is a big one for me. Uh, physical touch is another love language. We've already talked a little bit about that. Um, and receiving gifts. Um, we all like receiving gifts from time to time. So how do the love languages and the types of intimacy impact someone who lives with chronic illness? Well, understanding your love language, your best type of intimacy, and your partners can really enhance communication and emotional connection. Knowing and speaking your partner's love language and being able to communicate that to them is going to improve all of the <laughs> satisfaction that you're going to get and you're going to receive and that your partner also receives. Uh, so fulfilling your own love language is also crucial. So something we're going to talk about in a little bit is really knowing your own body, knowing what you need and making sure that your needs are met as well. And adapting your actions and expressions to meet both yours and your partner's love languages and intimacy levels. So regularly express your love in ways that align with each other and make sure you're always communicating because they will change over time. So let's talk about the importance of intimacy and relationships for the overall well-being. I want everyone to remember that nurturing your connections and allowing yourself to receive support are crucial steps in harnessing the positive impact that intimacy can have um, on your relationships. And it really does impact your overall well-being and health. It can improve so many things. Um, so it enhances your emotional support, um, having a partner that you trust fully, that you know you can be vulnerable with, um, and have that foundation of emotional and mental support to navigate life with chronic illness is really important. Having intimacy in your life also reduce, reduces stress and anxiety. Um, endorphins and hormones such as oxytocin and vasopressin really flood the body during intimate moments and strong relationship connections, um, which obviously improves your overall well-being similar to exercise endorphins. Um, it also boosts your self-esteem. Knowing that you're valued when you're in an intimate relationship um, can really foster a better sense of self-worth, which is a, a very big struggle for someone with chronic illness. Um, it improves your health outcomes, so the support of partners, especially ones that you're really comfortable being intimate with, increase the likelihood of your commitment to your treatment plans because you not only want to be healthy for yourself, but you also want to be healthy for others. And having an intimate relationship also gives you a sense of normalcy, which many of us that live with chronic illnesses don't always have. Um, it gives us the, the sense that even though there are these disruptions, there's something that is steady in our lives. So I want to give you guys a little bit of a patient perspective. Long before we knew I had EDS, I had chronic and severe bladder infections from the time I was 18 months old until now. Um, this meant at a young age I was poked and prodded and had tubes stuck in me and catheters and so many things that were uncomfortable causing a lot of medical trauma. Um, more importantly, it caused a really lack of self-worth. I didn't understand my body. I didn't understand why it was like this. There was a lot of tears, a lot of just covering up in heavy jackets and hats. Um, a lot of these quotes like, what if I'm too much of a burden for someone? What if something is really wrong with me? I'm never going to look like other people. No one wants to be with someone like me and I should just cover up all my scars. Has anyone else ever said those things internally to themselves? Yeah, it's not fun. Medical trauma plays a really big part in, in health and intimate relationships. When you are not used to having to explain to someone what might be going on with you, it can impact how you see yourself and how you see relationships in general. I think that for me, you know, having these issues 
very intimate issues with my bladder and reproductive organs from a very young age caused me to shy away from sharing and, and wanting to be with people. And it caused me to really think not very highly of myself. It took a really long time um, of learning strategies, being open, practicing communication before I felt comfortable. And I mean, now look at me, I'm here talking to you guys about sex, right? So I think I just want to encourage people that these conversations are hard, they're difficult, they're embarrassing sometimes, but they're worth having because it will be life-changing. So let's talk about some of the challenges that come with intimacy and sex and understanding our emotions. Um, first of all, fatigue, pain, anxiety, and fear are totally normal. They happen to everyone, regardless of if you have a chronic condition. But they really can limit your desire and emotional and physical availability, as well as your libido. And that's okay. We just have to acknowledge that this is a challenge that we need to overcome. Um, another challenge that we face is our body image and self-worth. You know, when we have physical challenges or physical limitations, it might impact how we view our body and how we want other people to see us. Um, we also struggle even more navigating emotions. Um, if we can't identify our own emotions, it's hard for us to expect others to also understand what we're, what we're feeling. Um, there's also a really big impact on intimacy. So when we aren't feeling good about ourselves, when we aren't feeling good about relationships, these challenges lead to avoidance, which lead to both unmet needs for yourself and for your partner. And then that leads to a communication breakdown. So all of these challenges are so valid. We all feel them or have felt them at some point or another. And if you don't communicate your hesitancies, it really can lead a breakdown in that intimate connection that you're gonna have with your partner. But by acknowledging and addressing the anxiety, fear, and frustrations, individuals can really work towards greater understanding and empathy with their partners and within their relationships while navigating all the complexities that we're gonna feel in having a chronic illness. So those are the challenges that I've identified, but what are some of the strategies that we can do to make it better? So first of all, open communication. Open communication with your partner looks like being honest, telling the truth, acknowledging things yourself, being open with yourself. Um, we also have setting realistic expectations. It's really important that you spend time getting to know your own bodies. Um, I can't emphasize this enough, and it's something I'm still working on as well. Um, some days I feel like I can conquer the world, and then some days I feel like I can't get out of bed for a week. So we really have to be realistic with what our expectations are when it comes to relationships and sex. Let your partner hear you, but also be willing to hear them. Also, education. Provide your partner with you know, as much education as you can that lets them learn about what your limitations are, what those feelings are, and what the struggles might be that you're going through. Um, this can also increase the bond that you have. Something else that I've been working on is prioritizing intimacy in your relationships. You know, we have busy lives. A lot of us work and manage our chronic illnesses or we're caregivers of people with chronic illnesses and it doesn't feel like there's time for these other things. But it's really important to dedicate that time to your partner, exploring intimacy and stepping outside of your comfort zone. And intimacy doesn't just have to be physical. If you remember back to the first slide, there's five different types that you can explore that can just increase what you guys are connecting on. Um, also explore alternative intimacy options. So, Get creative. Um, it doesn't just have to be intercourse or sex. There's a variety of alternatives um, that you should explore on your own and explore with your partner. Um, and then just continue to enhance your relationship. So always grow together. Um, the moment you're not growing together and expressing yourselves together, then, then you should think about things a little harder. But if you're always growing together, you're gonna be strengthening your relationship and naturally enhancing your intimacy with your partner because you're just connected in that way. So 
So as we keep going, let's talk about maintaining intimacy when you have limitations. Managing fatigue and pain is probably one of the hardest things to do. Um, you want to prioritize the communication with your partner, again, and know your body. What works for you some days is not going to work for you other days. So identify what triggers fatigue and pain, and then address it and communicate that with your partner. Also address anxiety, fear, and frustration. So going back to the open communication, um, you share that with your partner and the emotional challenges related to intimacy, sex, and relationships when you have chronic illness. These conversations are uncomfortable, but if we can do it here in a big room, you can do it at home in private. Um, you also can explore alternatives to intercourse. So embrace exploring yourself. You know, there's, there's physical touch with a partner, but there's also physical touch for yourself. Do things to identify what feels good so that you can communicate that to your partner and share those bonds. You also might want to explore adaptive devices and modifications. So don't be afraid to use um, devices or toys that can make you more comfortable. Extra pillows is sometimes really nice. And it can just make intimacy more enjoyable. And it could be a fun thing you guys can do together. Also, get creative and be understanding. Try new things. And if it doesn't work, have a conversation with your partner and then try something new the next time. By acknowledging and addressing limitations and fears and challenges, you can maintain a fulfilling and intimate connection with your partner despite all of the challenges we're going to face with chronic illnesses. So just concluding here, um, just a reminder, I am a patient, um, and this was my patient perspective. Um, but today we talked about intimacy and relationships um, and love language, how intimacy impacts your overall well-being, um, the challenges of intimacy with uh, relationships and chronic illness, um, strategies for intimacy with chronic illness and maintaining that intimacy and fostering enhanced relationships. If you want to connect with me and talk all things intimacy, sex, EDS, anything else, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is here as well as my LinkedIn. Thank you, guys.